First, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. This is Fox 12 Now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Greg Nibbler. We are live here from the Fox 12 Oregon newsroom, but what you're looking at right now is obviously a map of Oregon and the Oregon coast. Now, yesterday, you may have heard there was an earthquake off of the Oregon coast, somewhere around, well, outside of Coos Bay, we'll say, west of Coos Bay. I want to pull this up here just to give you context of where that earthquake occurred. So that's a 6.0 earthquake from what we heard from USGS yesterday and uh, off there on one of those fault lines on the Oregon coast. So we want to find out a little bit more. Uh, by the way, no damage reported, no, no tsunami. There's nothing that, that happened of danger, but still shows what a very active area it is that we live in. There are a lot of fault lines out there. Obviously, we've got volcanoes internally, so geologically, the Pacific Northwest is pretty active, and we want to find out more about this earthquake and just what's going on out there, what we should know, what if there are any concerns. And we're going to do that right now because we are joined by Harold from the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, and always appreciate uh, having you on here uh, to walk us through this, walk through the science behind what's going on, and just to get an understanding. I think it's kind of natural for a lot of people in the Northwest to think earthquake, you think the big one, you think, oh my gosh, you know, is this what's happening? And that's, that's not the case uh, from what I understand for this. But Harold, thanks for being here. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, could you walk us through, you know, what this earthquake is that just happened yesterday? Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, magnitude six sounds large. It is a relatively large earthquake, but this area, you know, it's 180 miles off the coast of Oregon. So it's a long ways away where the epicenter actually is. And it's on this Blanco fault zone or Blanco fracture zone, which is extends well out in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, a source of many earthquakes. A magnitude six size earthquake is kind of nearly an annual event out there, and sometimes they come in clusters. So as you said, fortunately there was no tsunami hazard and certainly no damage. I think some people felt it uh, along coastal Oregon, but other than that, really, really nothing except our sensors to detect it. And when you have an earthquake, you know, you said it's almost annual now to have a 6.0 earthquake out there. So. Let's talk about that that fault zone. Um, this is not the same as the Cascadia subduction zone, correct? And this isn't that kind of activity that's happening right there. That's right. The Cascadia subduction zone is a whole different animal, different fault line, much closer to our coast. As we know, it extends offshore just from basically the coastal region out to the the kind of the, the beginning of the of the deep ocean part. Uh, Blanco is much further away, um, and there are different types of earthquakes. So a magnitude six is not the same kind of thing as the potential magnitude eight or even nine scale earthquake. Remember, they grow as a, a logarithmic scale, so a nine is tens of thousands of times larger than a six, it turns out. Um, we would feel it for many minutes. The damage would be severe across our region. Fortunately, this is not that. And what is happening there with this specific fault zone? Yeah. So in Cascadia, we have the North American plate is kind of shoving its way westward right over the, the seafloor, which in our region is we call it the Juan de Fuca plate. The Juan de Fuca plate, uh, in turn, is up against the much larger Pacific plate, and that where they are moving side by side to each other is this Blanco fault zone. So it's actually between a different pair of the plates out underneath the ocean, if you will, than the Cascadia subduction zone. Um, it is very active seismically because those two plates are shifting side by side. And instead of saving up their energy for hundreds of years and then producing a giant earthquake, they seem to have these magnitude sixes, you know, again, very frequently. And we've seen quite a few of them in the past decade. And so these are really just relieving that pressure instead of holding it there and building it up to something much bigger. In a sense, yes, that's true. Although I will say one thing, there's a misconception I hear all the time that if we have small earthquakes like the magnitude threes and fours we once in a while get on land here, that somehow is relieving the stress of Cascadia. And that's also not true, unfortunately, because there are different faults and there are different spots. But it's absolutely true that the yeah more frequent magnitude sixes out there is preferable to if it waited for a very large one instead. Is there any kind of a magnitude of earthquake from this fault zone that would be would be of concern, I guess, for for humans on land? It, it would take a lot. I mean, uh, if it produced an earthquake that was magnitude, you know, seven and a half or larger, 
then I would think we would have to be concerned a little bit about maybe some of the shaking would be large enough to be damaging. Still, that would be probably not much and spotty and just in the nearest coastal regions. And it's possible that it could produce, it could trigger a tsunami at that kind of magnitude or larger. Um, it turns out the side-by-side -side faults like this Blanco one are, they don't really move the water in the same way that a fault that shifts the, the subsurface, you know, up a lot, um, which is what Cascadia is, uh, does. So, so um, a much larger earthquake, but we haven't really seen those take place on Blanco. So unless it changes its behavior from our experience, um, it's not super likely. Um and you mentioned too, and I just want to reiterate, so activity happening on the Blanco fault line would not have any kind of an effect on something where the Cascadia subduction zone is. Yeah, in, in general, no. Uh, earthquakes can, the shaking from an earthquake can trigger other earthquakes to take place. So it's not impossible for a larger Blanco earthquake, let's say again, seven, seven and a half or larger, to shake the Cascadia subduction zone in such a way that actually sort of triggers the beginnings of a, of a separate but bigger Cascadia earthquake. Um, the chances of that are, are, are low, but not zero, probably. Okay, and so that could be, could that be something that would be a potential indicator to watch, say if there was a 7.5 on this Blanco uh, fault zone, would that be something you'd instantly watch for? Yeah, if I, if I saw a much larger earthquake, and again, remember, it's not a linear scale, uh, but yeah. uh, the 7.5 on the Blanco, um, I would say that there would be a chance of a heightened risk of a Cascadia earthquake following it in short order, meaning anywhere from immediately to days, weeks, uh, months afterwards. Um, but that, you know, again, heightened risk doesn't mean high risk. It just means it's gone up somewhat. So we'd have to actually make some calculations at that point. And taking a look here at that uh, map to just to show off there, are all of those yeah. white spots, are those earthquakes? Yeah, so all the white dots are previous earthquakes that have happened in that area that are in the catalog that the USGS maintains of previous earthquakes. So you can kind of see how they're in that, you know, elongate line uh, spread a little bit, but extending basically northwest offshore. That's marking us for us the, the, the sort of the trace, the surface line of the earthquake fault that produced it. Interesting, so you can yes. See it. Yeah, it's joining many, many other events that we've seen in the past. All right. Uh, anything else that you think it would be important for people to know just when it comes down to it for, for earthquakes like this? Uh, I think the most important thing to know is that um, any earthquake that occurs like this is a reminder to us to be ready. Um, we do definitely know that there's a risk of a much larger earthquake in, in our region, in Oregon, in Washington, Northern California, and we just don't know when that's going to occur. That's just the reality of it. And so um, preparedness is important, you know, and, uh, and just thinking about um, what you'll be doing in order to get life back to normal right afterwards, because that's really, you know, most of us are going to make it through the big earthquake, and it's just a matter of how, how resilient are we going to be. Yeah, all of those concerns for infrastructure, have that to-go kit, all of those things. Definitely definitely things to think about in this area. Oh, and one other question, just because I know somebody will probably ask it, um, it when it comes to, you know, everything kind of being in some way geologically connected, would this have any connection with any kind of activity when it comes to the Cascades or volcanoes? Yeah, in this case, absolutely not. Uh, the Blanco is just too far away. It's really too small an earthquake. We haven't seen any kind of link like that between earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. There are cases where very large earthquakes look like they at least potentially have triggered eruptions. We saw a little bit of that with Kamchatka this past summer. If people might remember, there was a tsunami warning scare from a very large earthquake. Um, even then, it's kind of a, um, uh, can I say a shaky uh, connection between the two things? Um, but, uh, uh, but, but for one like this, no, absolutely not. And it probably also means that a volcano has to be kind of primed and ready to erupt for the shaking to actually induce an eruption. And we don't see any signs that any of the Cascade volcanoes are close to that at this point. All right, well, Held, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. And for people who want to know more and really dig into the details of this, what's the best place for them to go to follow along with all of your work? Yeah, you can find out all about what PNSN does at our website, pnsn.org.org. Uh, that's a great place. And also, you're in Oregon, so Oregon Emergency Management, OEM, has a great website with information uh, in Washington. It's the Washington EMD or Emergency Management Division. Take a look at those. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. And for everybody watching, again, this is Fox 12 Now. We're going to go ahead and take a break. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, you'll see this video in. If you're watching on our website or apps, uh, we have more content here throughout the afternoon, but we will take a break for now. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.